My name is Sarah Bond, and this is the County Development Index, quantifying human development in a United States context. The Human Development Index, or HDI, is a metric created by the United Nations to holistically measure and compare country development, which considers more than just economic status. The HDI uses education and health variables, as well as monetary statistics, to give a more comprehensive picture of a nation's development and reflects opportunity in each country. The goal of the HDI is to focus on factors that help all humans within a country to pursue choices that they value by extending their freedoms, enlarging their choices, enhancing their capabilities, and improving their opportunities. The index shows that economic growth is a means to development, but not the end. The holistic nature reveals the interplay of factors that underlie expanding choices. Like the HDI, The County Development Index, or CDI, is designed to holistically measure county development in the United States based on more than economic status. By using education, health, and monetary variables, as well as community factors, the CDI contextualizes the HDI framework to reflect the multifaceted nature of development in the U.S. Utilizing variables specific to life in the U.S. at the county level provides a more comprehensive and in-depth understanding of the factors limiting opportunity within counties across the country. Although the human development indices seek to analyze development worldwide, the methodology cannot cross cultural boundaries that dictate what development looks like in a specific country. Desegregation by county in the U.S. begins to overcome this issue of people being left behind in unacceptable deprivation that is hidden by a deceivingly high development score for a whole country. By using the CDI to divide counties into strata, inequities between counties become clear through analysis with demographic data and other additional variables. Although chronic deprivation differs by county, the HDI fails to capture diversity and disadvantages within the U.S. The goal of both indices is to shift the understanding of development from pursuing material wealth to increasing human well-being. The CDI illuminates the underlying activities creating inequity in development to be targeted for intervention. The CDI consists of four dimensions composed of 11 indicators. The dimensions of the CDI reflect the intentions of the HDI, but also reflect the context of the United States. The health dimension is comprised of the percentage of people with health insurance and the rate of those who die from heart disease compared to the nation's highest mortality rate. Lack of health insurance pushes individuals to utilize emergency services in place of primary care and creates significant debt to the individual and hospital system. As the leading cause of death in the United States, Heart disease causes substantial barriers to development. Heart disease costs over $200 billion each year due to required health care services, medications, and lost productivity. The education dimension includes attaining less than a 12th grade education, attaining a high school degree, completing some college, and completing a graduate degree. These four variables describe the population's education level. Educational attainment influences employment options and prospects, as well as general health and well-being. A community's collective education level impacts the priorities and goals of the local government. Higher education gives individuals the chance to pursue their goals and fulfill their life potential as members of society. The monetary dimension includes the Gini coefficient and median household income in terms of purchasing power parity. The Gini coefficient is a value that represents how equally wealth is spread throughout the community, which is important to measure if members of the community are being left behind in development. Median household income is put in terms of purchasing power parity in order to accurately compare wealth between areas where living costs may vary. Economic status is crucial in understanding overall development. The CDI also includes a fourth community dimension, which is composed of local government expenditure, percent of homes owned versus those rented, and percentage of employed citizens. This dimension goes beyond the HDI methodology to reflect metrics of local success and opportunity in the context of the United States. Local government expenditure reflects the amount of money spent by community officials on health, education, and social services accessed by residents every day. The percentage of owned versus rented households reflects the number of people within a county that are actively pursuing a lifelong investment. 
Employment status shows the availability of jobs in an area for individuals in a country where employment is expected as a step in bettering one's outcomes. The direction of each indicator is adjusted so that larger numbers reflect higher development and opportunity in counties. Feature scaling is implemented so that all values for a particular indicator fall within a 0 to 1 range. The CDI is the geometric mean of the dimension scores, and each dimension is equally rated. Counties were divided into four strata to compare counties into low, medium, high, and very high development. The CDI ranges from 0.33 to 0.96 and averages at 0.75, with 1.0 representing complete development. The values are approximately normally distributed. The distribution map of the CDI shows geographic variation between counties, with green representing high development and red representing low development. This map shows the variation in Virginia CDI values. Fairfax, Virginia is shown in orange with a CDI score of 0.85. Development varies even in counties that are very close together. For each stratum, a regression for each indicator is performed where CDI is modeled as a function of the standardized indicator. The estimated coefficients are used to determine which indicators are most important when calculating the CDI for counties in a given stratum. The top and bottom five counties are shown here, ranked by CDI score. It was also found that poverty decreased significantly as development increased, supporting our claim that the CDI still successfully represents economic development. It was also found that urbanization increased significantly as development increased. Although the United States ranks highly on the Human Development Index, development is not equal within the country. Analyzing factors of development such as health, education, and monetary statistics on the state level is not sufficient to understand how life looks in the U.S. By calculating an index value on the county level and including community level data, geographic variation in human development becomes clear. Counties close in proximity have very different CDI values, showing that development does not happen equally across the country. Our findings show these important trends in chronic deprivation between levels of development. The decreasing weight of the Gini coefficient on CDI score shows that income inequality is less prevalent in highly developed counties. Livable and equitable wages must be prioritized before other variables of development. As development increases through medium and high strata, high school education becomes more pertinent to CDI score. While an importance on income inequality and median income remains, high school education becomes more relevant to a county's ranking and should receive the most focus. At the highest level of development, upper education and health factors more heavily impact a county's final index value. College education, median income, and chronic disease have the highest descriptive value of CDI scores and should be addressed first. Demographic data is used to understand the breakdown of race between stratum. Differences in racial composition between counties may reveal variation in development score due to the impact of discrimination on housing, job, and health care opportunities. The percentage of white individuals among all counties in each stratum is calculated and compared to the percentage of the total U.S. population. Similarly, percentages for African Americans, Native Americans, Asian Americans, Pacific Islanders, and multiracial persons are computed. These percentages provide insight into how different races are distributed among the strata. Policy should aim to pull up those who have fallen behind the highest developed counties by promoting decisions that foster better health, education, and monetary outcomes for all people. Our data can be used to better inform policymakers in order to target intervention based on CDI trends of deprivation. Thank you for listening. Please direct questions to bond1 at stolaf.edu.